In this lecture, uh, we're going to talk about mathematical models. All right? by, a, by a mathematical model, I mean uh, an equation or a formula or a function or sometimes it's a procedure or a process that describes a physical situation, that describes a real world scenario. For example, you've probably seen the formula distance equals r times t. And this formula describes the motion of an object that's moving with a constant velocity. For example, uh, the d represents the distance the object moves, r represents that constant speed or rate, and t is the time the object travels. So if I know any two of these values, for example, if I know the distance and the time, I can use my model, I can use the formula here, to calculate the third value, to calculate the rate. So what we're going to do throughout this lecture is we're going to look at several different real-world situations, and we're going to come up with mathematical models, mathematical functions, that describe those situations. So in the first one here, we have an example from manufacturing where we're trying to build a window pane with this shape on the right here. It's rectangular, and it has a semicircle inside of it. And the glass for the two colors have different costs. And I don't know how big this thing is going to be. It's possible it's actually going to be made in several different sizes. And I want to come up with a model or a function that describes the total cost of producing one of these windows. So to do that, I'm going to do this in two pieces. First, I'm going to find the cost of producing the green section in terms of the radius. Well, the cost is always going to be the area of the section times the unit cost. Now the area, uh, we have a semicircle here, so the area is going to be 1 half pi r squared. And the unit cost for the green glass is 2 and a quarter per square inch. So if I get out my calculator and I do 1 half times pi times 2 and a quarter, that comes out to 3.53 r squared. So now I'm, I'm going to do the same thing with the other part. I'm going to find the cost of producing the blue section. And it's going to have the same basic idea. It's going to be the area of the blue section times the unit cost. And finding the area is going to be a little tricky because we don't have a formula for that kind of irregular shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of the entire rectangle and I'm going to subtract out the area of the circle. And what's left will be the blue part. So the whole rectangle, remember we have these radii here. So that means the length must be 2r, which makes the area the length times the height. And I'm going to subtract from that the area of the semicircle, which we already figured out over here. That's 1 half pi r squared. And the unit cost for this section is $1.50. So now 2r times r, that's 2r squared. And I can factor out the r squared here. And this becomes 2 minus 1 half pi times $1.50. And now here again is where I'll get my calculator out and ask it what this numeric part is. And this comes out to... 0.64 r squared. So the function that I'm looking for, the function for the total cost, is the cost of the blue part, of the green part, 
plus the cost of the blue part. So that's 3.53R squared plus 0.64R squared. And if you add those two together, you come up with 4.17R squared. So that's my final function. The cost of producing a window of radius R is equal to 4.17 times R squared. That's my model for the cost of this manufacturing situation. So here we have another example we, from aviation. We have a plane that is currently directly over a radar station. So we have the ground here. And we have this radar station. And we have a plane that is directly above it. And when it's directly above it, that the difference here is the altitude, which is 6.6 .6 miles. And this plane is moving forward at a speed of 550 miles per hour. So if the plane travels for h hours, that means the distance that it's traveled is 550 h. And the question wants me to come up with a formula that describes the distance from the radar station. So that's this distance here. Now, notice what I did here. Right, I've got a triangle. And specifically, it's a right triangle. And I'm looking for this distance. So to find that, I can use the Pythagorean theorem and say the distance squared equals 6.6 .6 squared plus 550h squared. So this is, what is 6.6 .6 squared? That's 43.56 plus 302,500t squared. And now this is nice, but I don't want a function for, for d squared. I want one for d, the distance. So to get there, I'm just going to take the square root of both sides. And I'm going to switch back to h. I, should, I keep trying to make it t for time, but the question asked for h. So there's our function. The distance after h hours is equal to the square root of 43.56 plus 302,500 times h squared. So the, this next example comes from sales. Um, I have soda that's being poured into a cup. And the cup has a diameter of 3.5 inches and the height is 7 inches and I want to know the volume as a function of the cup's height. So in other words after we're, we're pouring this soda in and when the, the height gets to H how much volume is there? Well remember the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height and we know r squared the diameter is 3.5 and the radius is half of that And if I get out my calculator and I figure out what 3.5 divided by 2 squared times pi is, this comes out to 9.62 h. So that's going to be the volume in the cup when it's been filled to a, a height of h inches. All right, so here we have an operations example. We have two balls that are going to be shipped inside a rectangular box designed so the balls fit snugly. 
and I want to know how much the packing material is going to cost if it costs two cents per cubic inch and I want to find this in terms of the radius of the spheres so what we have is something like this we have these two spheres and they're packed tightly together so they're right up against each other and they're in a box that also fits right up against the edges of the spheres. All right, so I want to find the area outside of the spheres. So to do that, I'm going to do the same kind of thing that we did back in the first problem. I'm going to find the area, excuse me, the volume. I'm going to find the volume of the box, and I'm going to subtract from that the volume of the two spheres, and that'll be how much I have left over. All right, so let's think about these volumes. The radius of a sphere is R, and I have two of these here, and it's a thickness of one sphere in this direction, and one sphere in this direction. So the height is 2R, the width is 2R, and the length down here is 4R. So the volume of the box is going to be 4R times 2R times 2R, which is 16R cubed. Now the volume of, of the spheres, there are two of them, and the volume of one is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that's 8 thirds pi r cubed. And now finally, now I can find the area or the volume of the outside part, the part that needs the packing. That's going to be the volume of the box minus the volume of the sphere. So that's 16 r cubed minus 8 thirds pi r cubed. And if I factor out the r cubed, this is r cubed 16 minus 8 thirds pi. Now you get out your calculator. 16 minus 8 thirds pi is 7.62. So this is 7.62 uh, r cubed. Now that's nice, but it's not quite what I was asked for. I was asked to find the cost of the packing material. So the cost is going to be the volume times the unit cost. And the volume is 7.62 R cubed. The unit cost is uh, 0 0.02 dollars per cubic inch and if I multiply that out this comes out to 1.52 r cubed. So there is my cost function, my cost model for this particular shipping situation.